Um, I would like to meet you in person. I have a lot of things that I want to pull out. Wow. And I would like to do it one-on-one. -on -one. Sure. Okay. Um, shall we? We shall not. Nicholas. We shall not. Hi. My name is Nicholas. So what's the name? My name is Eva. Hi, Eva. But we have a police in our fellowship. Our president cannot see any sister alone except the brother goes with him. Who came up with that kind of policy? The Escos did. When was that? When you abandoned us for school politics. Hello everybody, my name is Victor Tegbade. I'm popularly, popularly known as Victor Tegs. I'm a German minister, I'm a child of God, and um, a graduate of building from the University of Lagos, Nigeria. University of Post Stress and Nations Pride. And I'm, I'm, I'm a video editor as well. Welcome to Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. That's the toys, toys behind, behind the, the movies. movies. This is Beyond Entertainment. And this is Beyond Entertainment. I, I, I feel God works in mysterious ways. Um, well, a short story. Uh, Growing up, I knew I had something to do with media. I loved camera, um, I loved handling laptops, I loved, I loved being behind camera, but I never really understood what that passion was. And then, um, in terms of my course, in fact, I had a lot of choices. I wanted to press, I read Ben Carson's book, Gifted Hands, so I, it influenced my choice. I thought I was going to be a neurosurgeon, and then gradually from being, wanting to be a neurosurgeon, it changed to wanting to be an engineer because I love mathematics. And then um, I remember the pastor, a family friend, advised my dad and told him that ah, you should study architecture. It's a very difficult course. Go and build. I applied for architecture. I didn't do technical during in secondary school. I think I don't talk about your school, but And then um, I was qualified, so I wasn't picked for architecture. And I was given building. And go and build. Building was interesting, but Unilag was one of the one of the pivotal uh, shifts that I had in my life was, was the point that a lot of things changed for me. I, I had a lot of exposure in Unilag in Lagos and I, I joined the campus fellowship then that trained me. I, I had a leader then from Jack Kimball. He trained me and introduced me to a church called Our City City of David in Lagos, via Lagos. And that was where I was taught video editing. And, and I was really, really, and all the things I wanted to do, I loved doing. I saw that I loved doing. I saw them in the media picture, media, church, media presentation, online, live streaming, video editing, and the like. So that was how building, being a builder is now a video editor. So for drama, I've been watching Muslim movies as far as I can. I can differentiate between my right and my left, thanks to my parents. And um, I never knew I was going to be a drama minister. But I attended Muslim um, Film Academy in 2019 because I wanted to upgrade my skills in editing. That was why I joined. I never knew I was going to have, I never knew I was going to have anything to stay in front of camera. The passion I had, I was having was, was behind the camera. So I never knew there was also more for me in front of the camera. And so I, I remember that I was having a dilemma because it was my final year week. I started the five year course. So every student of university looks forward to their final year week. It was the final year week I paid my dues, I bought the clothes, and I saw the flyer for the film academy then. It was August 20th, 21st to 25th, I can't forget, 2019. As I was in dilemma. I think because I'm very active on Twitter, I posted on my Twitter page. A lot of people gave this advice. Oh no, drama, um, film academies will always exist. Your final week is once in a lifetime. Choose wisely, no different voices. Eventually, I'm, I'm glad that I, I followed, you know, the spirits, the spirits leading and I went for film academy. And film academy, um, that was, that was, I like to call that the little integration. I met a lot of people, amazing people. I met my covenant friend and brother today for the first, um, um, there the, for the first time, Sewe Lousa, and the journey has been amazing. And so after school, I thought, okay, let me just find time. I went for basic and the rest is history. My first official appearance in a movie was in 2020. I got a call from Dilaba. Um, so I did a coming appearance in Jela. I was, I was his PA. In Jilla. So that was my first appearance in, I think that was the first time I'm appearing in, 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 in that was my first appearance, yes. And then um, 2021, I was privileged, I was called by my brother, my big brother, Bato Belimiwa, and Ebola, to come for a location on the games. Um, 
I wanted to just come and just be around though, and then uh, the PVO rolled me in, and I was, um, I think, took with his roommate. I can't forget, I can't remember. Yes, I was calling yes, in, uh, in um, games. And then that's in 2021, I went to, um, I sailed in Kelly, and because some people had known, few people had known me from Gila, I don't know how, just that one appearance, people, some people saw me there. And then um, I was in, I was in five minutes in NCC. That was a long story. I didn't even know how I found myself in five minutes. But I was in drama unit and we had a movie project, a movie shoot. And I encouraged the DD then, drama director then. I told her we can do this. So we did a movie. It was from stage and the script was so powerful and inspiring. And I felt we could shoot this into a movie. So we shot a movie and I doubled as the, I did three things actually. I was the AD, I was the editor, and I, I was a cast. Yes, that was 2021. I think that was, and then 2022, ha, 2022 was a, was a big shift for me. I came back from service and I'd gotten a call from already before to take a role in a movie as one of the friends of the major character. And then a few days after I got another call back, like, no, 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 I'm changing the role. I'm not taking the, major, the friend of the major character. I'm not taking the lead role. Ah, I was shocked because I'd read the script and I saw how enormous it was. So I was, that was 2022 and then same 2020, 2021, 2023, um, about twice. So it's, it's, it's just been a few years. I'm, I'm new to this ministry. <laughs> it's just been from 2020, 2023. Um, I, I, I can't count the number of movies I've edited. I've edited a lot of short films for my brother, uh, my wife. Um, I've edited, I've edited quite, I, was, I edited uh, my, uh, uh, my beloved, it was the NCCA movie we shot. I've edited, oh, I've edited about two. I edited the citation. Um, I can't, I, there are quite a number of movies. I edited Love and Mail Lost to the Glory and the Lord of the Lord. Amen. Video editing is an, is an interesting journey. I love editing so much because uh, it's just like taking scraps, different scraps, and bringing them into something beautiful. So if you're on set and you see people, you, you, they can't allow you to watch what you've been shot because you just begin the two um, camera rolling, audio file, this, 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 it will be boring to you, you will not be blessed. But what an editor does is it takes away what you need to see and what you need to hear. And I tell people that an editor can make or buy a movie. No matter what you shoot on set, you come out to the editor's desk. And it's only what the editor wants to see. Only if the director is inclined and can now talk to the editor. But an editor is very, very important. So um, editing is a, is a very interesting journey. And if, 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 if for someone that wants to go into editing, um, I would say, um, you have come to the right, you, are, you, are, you, are, you have the right thoughts, you have the right ambition. But it's, it's, it's a practice over time. I'm still learning. I, I started editing officially in 2016. And now I'm still learning. I still learn things when I'm even working on a new project. I advise people to start editing with laptops for some reasons. Because it helps you. It helps you. Maybe people are systems. Some people have fantastic phone editors. But obviously, phone editing has a limit, has a constraint. Or like when you're editing on a system. And um, start with two. Not until you see a movie, a movie that has been shot or someone shoots it. Start to take your phone, shoot something, edit it yourself. Make YouTube your friend. I don't joke with YouTube. YouTube, Instagram, those two places are places that I go and I don't... Of course, Instagram is taking my money by taking my data. So I need to take knowledge from them. So if by any chance Instagram, because you know, social media works on your algorithm. The algorithm works on what they see that you like or things that you search to me. So most of the time, I get suggestions of editors, that are giving tips. Immediately I see like I don't even waste time. I follow immediately so that I can get if I possibly make them favorite so that when they post things, I will see them. Because these are things that helps my knowledge. So it helps me to have an edge over over uh, amongst other people. It helps me to be able to have more knowledge. So as an editor, you need to you need to um, research. You need to make internet your friend. We are encountering some editing issues some days ago and it even I didn't and I had not encountered it before. What did I do? I took my phone, went online, searched for it search what issue was, it has existed, there's no problem in life, it has not existed. Just for you to search for it, make a research and find out about it. And also in, uh, in Modern Film Academy, we organize various editing classes. There's, one, there's a full one that we organize, editing magazine, there's a one week one, different, different edits. So as much as you can, if you see any editing program, you know, go for it and have as much as you can, don't forget in quotes, if, if, if you don't have it, no problem, but as much as you can, have an editor that you can you know, always access and ask questions from time to time where I encounter this. And make mistakes. Please make mistakes when you're editing. When you make mistakes, it helps you. You won't make a mistake again. The mistakes I have made in the past, I can't make it again. In fact, I, I now use to teach people. 
I use that mistake to teach people. So I don't make some mistakes. So make new mistakes. Keep trying. Keep making mistakes. If you're making mistakes, you are getting better. You are mastering the art of editing. And never have the notion of editing is, is like coding. Editing is simple. It's just editing basically cut, cut, join, finish. That's it. So I remember in 2019 doing the film academy. Um, you know, Evangelist Daniela my Lee was teaching us script writing, and he told us how he got this inspiration for Abattoir. I can't forget because he said in his words he was trusting God, waiting on God for a serial, he was watching serials and his dead God to give him a serial. And then he knelt by his bed. I'm saying it the way he said it that day. He knelt by his bed and he was crying for days. God, give me a script, give me a script. And so, long story short, he got his story. I got in Abattoir, and he said the first draft got lost. The laptop got crashed. He tried the frames of the program and it couldn't work. And so the moment he shared that story, I knew that this is the devil is never happy for things like this. So he would, he would always fight battles to you know um to, to counter things like this. So I knew that this this is a powerful project. So long story short, I think after after the train, I texted, I remember I texted him then I said, sir, the train was powerful, please when is Abattoir coming out? So I think Abatua came out that same year and Kai, Abatua has been mind blowing. From the storyline to the cast to the editing, it's been amazing. And if you watch Abatua, you see how that the story, the technicality is evolving. You know, I, I call there's something I call the love rice, the Jello rice feel. That was the feel that Abatua had in season one. If you watch Abatua season two, and a different feel. Abatua season three, season four. Uh, and when I mean Jello rice feel, I'm talking about the color, you know. The color thing, he had, he had this red stone, but things have it has really evolved from the story, you know, the to, to the casting, to the technicality, to the editing, to the sound. It, it has this, it has this carriage. You know, I tell people that when you hear, oh, 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 oh that's the sound of painting song, the first thing that comes to my head is let the light shine, I don't even be in darkness because it has just morphed the culture in our heart. So, I've had an amazing project, and I appreciate God's life of evangelism. I'm like, the way flesh and blood couldn't have revealed such a script, you know. And something that happened in the in season four when we were doing the cast cast and uh, the, the crew meeting rather and evangelist told, told me let me you say something he said how did evangelist get the story of SUG students in the government for someone that went to a private university in Bowen there is no uh, message in Bowen Bowen is a private university how come and that's why I knew that about twice it's it, it is something that it, it drops from heaven to him. It's, it's very divine. So, and then in 2023, January precisely, I got a call from Evangelist Damiola McBamley like that I was going to be coming as a production manager on the set of Abattoir under the supervision of Evangelist Tony Owa, which we popularly call our principal. I was shocked. I didn't see that coming. So, but that gave me the, afforded me the chance and the opportunity to have access to the script before the location because of other things that has to go on the ground. And when I was in this crate, I, I saw the beauty and I was, I saw the reality of things. I saw, you know, maybe people think that sometimes actors just go on set and just see what they like and just flow and everything is good. No, the script writer had sat down, taking the pain of reading them words by words. And I saw the beauty of a blessed script and a blessed man. And we'll say that this man is blessed. This abattoir is a blessing from God. So um, was was joining was um, on set as a production manager and then there was a need for a cast that was not a, a role that wasn't casted and that was with Nicholas, the friend of Billy. So that was when Evangelist Daniela Nagamele told me to take the role on set of Abattoir. So Nicholas is just basically the friend of Billy and um, the assistant or the vice president of the fellowship that was in charge of the fellowship when Billy went away with the, um, with the political ambition of SUG and he is also um, a very, very dedicated man of God. Yes, a dedicated brother with passion for souls. He loves Dele so much. Guy, how was my presentation now? Well, I killed this right. It wasn't so good. What? I mean, you spoke well. Uh, so, how, how wasn't it so good? Dele, you were trying so hard to be diplomatic. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Dele, I know how much you dream to become the president of the students in of this school. Yes. But I want to know that any dream Pushes God out of the picture. It's not worth it. <laughs> Nicholas, what are you saying? Eh? In what way have I pushed God out of this? The last guy who questioned you was bent on exposing you. But you hid it from him and from the people there. Why? Because you were ashamed. Mm. I was ashamed. <laughs> Dilly, 
For a second, I didn't recognize you up there. You were so carried away with being called the president so much that you, you don't even care what God calls you. Well, taking the role for me was not challenging, but it was challenging. And I say that. I say that because uh, people were saying that, oh, thanks. Nicholas was just like your character. And like, well, it was God that helped me to be able to interpret the role so well, nothing but God. Um, but the challenge for me was because I was I was in the shoe of the production manager and I was also a craft. So sometimes it might be quite challenging, you know, um, getting off that that mental state of being a production manager when you have a lot of things you are managing and then being a cast. Because being a cast, you have to enter into the character, you have to be composed, you know, God has to help you. And so the challenge I had was just sometimes being able to um, leave that state of the production. Sometimes I'm on set and I'm supposed to act and I'm already practicing something that's supposed to happen the next minute. So that was that was the little challenge I had. But interpreting the role God really helped me. It was a, it was a beautiful character. I, I enjoyed the character so much. He's a passionate person. He's someone that loves the contemporary gospel and is still doesn't want to let go of the old times. So he, he's striking a balance and he's helping the life of Dele because even not for Dele, even not for Nicholas, Dele might have been might have been long gone. Um, I'd like to meet you in person. I have a lot of things that I want to pull out. Wow. And I'd like to do it one on one. Sure. Okay. Um, shall we? We shall not. Nicholas. We shall not. Hi. My name is Nicholas. So, what's the name? My name is Eva. Hi, Eva. But we have a police in our fellowship. Our president cannot see any sister alone except a brother goes with him. Yes. Who came up with that kind of policy? The Escos did. When was that? When you abandoned us for school politics. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Heva. I didn't know um, such a policy was in the fellowship. I, I, I apologize. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, what is the issue exactly? We can discuss it together. I, I can go get some chairs, we'll talk about it. I need to see him alone. Uh, we are family. Whatever issue you have, you can discuss with all of us and we'll pray with you. It's not a family affair. It's a personal affair. Oh, I'm ready to talk. Let us know. Dilly, let's go inside. She means what Nicholas, who? Hmm. Brother Dilly. Hmm. How will a fellowship president be arguing a sister five times, five times outside, and people are now seeing you? What do you want people to see? You know, I feel like sometimes the things that we do may not necessarily be wrong, but the, what the message it portrays to people outside is very important, especially when you are in a position that could put people look up to. For someone that is a fellowship president that all eyes are on, that people are looking up to respect him, such a thing might denote something else. It might have a different um, motive, but it might, it, might, it might bring up another message to someone else. And not forgetting that <laughs> the devil is not also watching, he's actively looking for the fall of every child of God. So it could be that channel that the devil wanted to come in. And that was that was just the case for Dili. Dili was, was careless, he was so, was so eager to be the soul that he, 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 was, he was losing himself already. And thank God for Nicholas. So I think Dilly just needs to be careful. For Nicholas, for, I feel Nicholas, Nicholas is, is someone that everybody needs. Everybody needs a Nicholas in their life to check you, to help you, to correct you, to keep you in check, really. Yeah. Don't tell me to calm down. Do you have a sister? Yes, I do have a sister. Then you should ask yourself how many sisters' lives he has ruined. But it's here to ask God for mercy. You should ask yourself how many daughters' lives he has destroyed. He is here to ask God for mercy. And that is what is even annoying me. <laughs> Knowing that God will be merciful and forgive and forgive this criminal. Dilly, there were two criminals on the cross with Jesus Christ. One despised him and the other asked God for mercy. Right there and there, even with his bag of sin and guilt and shame, Jesus Christ made him welcome into heaven. Who are we to condemn when, Jesus, when, when Christ has forgiven him? Nicholas, you did not meet her. I met her. I think my most favorite character is I love Badi's character so much. Um, for some weird reasons, I love Badi's character. Badi's character, no, Badi's character is a, forget the bad side. Badi, Badi is, is a go-getter. He doesn't care. He just wants to get the job done. You know, he just wants to get there. He wants to have it done. And I think for the fact that the role was well interpreted, so it's so believable. You know, thank kudos to Evangelist Kaya Balala. That's such a, such a very good interpretation. I I I love his character. There's like every, his facial expressions in Luna are always top notch. And then I love Babagiru's character. Babagiru is like the level of everybody. Whenever there's trouble, everybody finds their way to Babagiru's house. You know, look at when Flora had issues. Flora and um, Mr. Dibola and Kaya they they all came to Babagiru's desk when Akin was about to die and um. 
I, I, I can't remember. I'm looking for Akin. Yeah, okay, so I'm so, doing like the level of all the trouble. So any trouble just comes to Babylon's desk. So just be sure that as long as it can come to Babylon's desk, <laughs> it's excessive. So those are my, those are my two favorites. Hello, my daughter. Baba Ben Rodi have taken him. Oh. Oh. Who? I don't know where they have taken him to. Who are you talking about? They want to use him for sacrifice. Help me, Baba Ben Rodi. Oh. Uh, calm down. Who exactly are you talking about? My son. <laughs> my son. <laughs> Please save him. They are about to kill him. Oh, ah, Jesus. How can we find him now? I don't know. I don't know. I have checked. His house is not there. What is his name? Ah. <laughs> ah. He must not die. He must not die. Tell me what is his name? Murenike. <laughs> uh, just calm down. Jesus is in charge, eh? Don't worry. <laughs> you see, all I want to know is the name. What is his name? Papa Bingo. Let me introduce you to my new convert. His name is Akio. Ake. How did you know my name? Association is very important in life. The right people that you have around you is very, very important. So looking at the story of Jiro Sonia, Jiro Sonia has a son. It was, it was whatever mistake that they need him to make, <laughs> that made him pick Martin so like being rose. Because the connection is just between, there's a, the connection and the, and the, and the lifeline is Martin's in, in between him. There's, there's Sonia and the secret he has, there's Martin's and Baba Biro. And Martin's story will have been long gone, like probably, probably been dead. Thank God for Baguero and Maguire in his life, for the prayer, for the intercession, for Mr. Anigola as well in his life. These are people that have been helping me because they never, they never enter trouble. So the brother is a go to lawyer, even if Biro says he's not going to help him. So I, I feel like these are the things that have been keeping Sonia yeah, because we try this when he's supposed to be dead. In fact, he's supposed to have been dead since season three when he was in coma and they had attacked him and death came to him. Death came because he had, he had broken the edge, he had left then. And there's no way you leave a the court. They will not let you go. They want to hold you down until you are dead. They don't want to hear you speaking. And so, Martins was, because Martins had the consciousness of a believer. He knew that there was still for his father. All hopes were gone from the hospital. He took him from the hospital, brought him to, to Baba Guru's house. I, you know, I, you know I, 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 that's why I said Baba Guru is like the level of all troubles. So he came to Baba Guru's house and intercessions were raised for days. They came to attack him. Everybody tried to attack him. They could not get him. Because there was a Martins and there was a Bagaluno's family that was interceding for him. These people were there praying for him. And even after he came out from the coma, out of the coma, there were still people that were still, you know, Bagaluno was still helping him to go, helping with believers, uh, the believers class. While Eniola, unfortunately for her, she's from a family that, that, um, that is, that the father, the head of the family is a cultist. And so there is no protection for her. Now she's a believer. I feel like, she could have had this sort of protection being associated with Biro because Biro is the son of the one that is protecting the other person that should have died. All that was he has, he has committed. But Biro is just like the son of, he's just like a child of many, you know, pastors that they don't have that reverence that people have for their pastors. You know, I'm privileged to be a pastor's son and I know, and I know what this can feel. You don't, some people, you see how people honor your father, go to your father for issues, they leave, their lives are changed and you're living off. It's not my daddy. My dad, I see him every morning, we see him late now. It's my normal, it's not my dad. I know my dad now. So there is this sin finish, so to speak. You don't have honor and respect for that grace. And you will not, and if you don't honor your grace, you can't benefit from that grace. It's not possible. So that has made that, I think that's one of the things that has built the kind of culture that Biro had. Biro doesn't respect, doesn't know, doesn't value the honor of his father. Though, but Biro to have his shortcomings, but no matter what, his father will only be a father. Your father says that, um, no matter, no matter how, what a child is, a child can never have the, yeah, I, I don't know what English is for, it's a, the, the, the rags that if, 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 an elderly we have. And if it's, an elderly man stands here, what do you see? The child will climb, climb the top and you see. So, no matter how bad they have a father, their father will make mistakes, they are, they are fathers, they are, they are mortal men too. But it's your own consciousness to know that they are men and they are prone to mistakes. So, 
and that's just unfortunate. It's born to a family that probably doesn't have salt, that are not saved, a father that is a cultist, that is trying to, you know, um, trying to trying to find his way to, to get the power. And then maybe God was even trying to help her and then he led her to Biro so that Biro would help. And, you know, she said she said a line that touched me in, in season season four. She said that when she fell in love with Biro, she fell from she fell off the course. So she knew she was in trouble. She knew things were things were she knew that things that she was doing, cohabiting with him was not right. But she kept on going because because she was not grounded, because she didn't have it, she didn't have it, she was not well rooted. So the saving grace of, of Jerusalem is Martin's in son, Martin's in connection to the Aguero. And you know, this, this thinking about it now, it makes me understand that some things, that some decisions that we make, that they may not just be for now. God is making, helping us make those decisions for the future. The decision that Martin's father made, taking Martin's to Baba, Baba Guero, when he was young, is what is saving him now. That was the seed they had sown. If he was probably not connected to Baba Guero, Maybe you have died by now because <laughs> the secrecy are powerful and he doesn't have such power to counter such power. That 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 that's very power. But his son was invested in that family and the son that he called them his, his parents. And so they took him as a child and they were ready to intercede and finally the gap for him. So they interceded for him and stood in for him. But there's nobody to intercede for Emila. Emila knew she needed someone to intercede for her. She knew there was supposed to be Baru. As she was always begging um Bero, please let's go to your father. But the Bero was he just wanted to just poop. To the kind of son that he was, he would not take any to his to his father. So maybe, maybe so sad to think of. Maybe if she had met his father, probably things would have helped, you know. And you are going to have seen this trouble coming. So then let's fast. Say no, you are praying for wedding. It's just an unfortunate situation for for Enela. So unfortunate. I feel like journalists are wise. Berozon is Berozon is more of lack of understanding or more of speech finish, like I said. Yes, I feel like it's for that lack of wisdom. Uh -huh. I think it is journalist because you already know that these people, your wife has warned you. You've heard how these people, these atrocities that people have committed. You now have the F13 to want to go to their warehouse. What were you looking for? It's not possible for you to enter a lion's den and not come out. Why not Daniel? How will you come out alive? So it's, 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 it's and it, 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 there's something that was only saying fame and money. That was, that was what was. Fueling the decision. It wasn't even really because he wanted to help the country. Or wanted to be that. It was fueling, was fueled by the, the want for fame, the want for money, the want for recognition. And I think he landed into where he deserves. Everybody, I think everybody think, should agree with me that he, what, what he got at the end, he deserves it. When you visit the arts of death, what do you expect? Say you go see. It's just a story. I just need a story, please. So you can't risk your life like this because of one to me. Please, I have family at home, please. Your family go watch you on TV. You go turn celeb. Investigative journalist. Murdered in cold blood by commando. Now the headline be that. If you kill me, who will tell your story? I would want to know about the dreaded commando. Please. How will you be famous? I'm the only journalist that knows it all. And I can tell it all, please. I tell people that the man ministry is a powerful ministry. Um, I feel like it is. It is it leaves a lasting effect than sermons because I don't think you can remember the sermon your pastor preached the second week of um, August last year. I'm not sure. But you can remember sins from the train why this thing will leave an indelible mark and impact in your life. So the man is a very delicate ministry and it's under the entertainment world. And it's an end time, end time strategy of God in this at these times of year. To, to raise up our generals. And God is raising up generals for the general ministry at this time. And so, number one, I tell people it's a privilege for me and for anybody to be in this, to be a part of it at this time, to be, to be part of what God is doing. And looking at, looking at, looking back, I was talking about how that Abattoir has evolved, you know. And that's for many movies. You've watched different movies of different gospel movies in the past. They're 
they are, they are changes, things are changing, technicality, in terms of technicality, and we cannot just because of technicality is our message, the message is still there. So I, I, I believe that in years to come, I see the, the German ministry taking over the entertainment industry. So you go to the comment section and you see unbelievers talking about how that they were saved, how that they were transformed, how that um, their lives were changed just by watching a movie. That no one was there with just a video clip they were watching. That shows the power of uh, power of, of what we are doing. So it's it's so power intense. All right. Um. So keep watching the entertainment show with TVO. Why are you not watching your entertainment show with TVO? So you're going to be blessed. Your lives are going to be changed, and you're not, you're not going to be many things again. Modern entertainment Beyond the applause of men We seek for something valuable And that is the soul of man yeah. And that is the soul of man Men and women, so that forget. And this is beyond entertainment. And this is beyond entertainment. Beyond entertainment. Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO.